I didn't know whether or not I was going to do a commentary on the whole thing involving uh, Michael Jackson and this whole leaving Neverland thing. Uh, but Oprah Winfrey, or as I have come to call her, Okra Wigfrey, has literally tap danced on my last nerve. Literally tap danced. And it's just amazing of how she's able to do it so effortlessly. And I used to always wonder why back in the day some people said they never liked Oprah. But see, the thing is, I was young, so I never understood as to why. But now that I'm older and more wiser, I've come to learn why people feel the way they do about her. So as we all know, there is a documentary out that premiered at the Sundance Film Festival called Leaving Neverland. And it's ironic that it premiered at Sundance the same month as they did that damn documentary about R. Kelly called Surviving R. Kelly. And when you think of the titles of just those two things, it sounds real eerie in nature, like Surviving R. Kelly, Leaving Neverland. It's like you're trying, like you're literally, in, it's almost like a horror movie. You're trying to escape something. But anyway, uh, Okra decided that she was going to interview the two main people of that particular documentary by the names of Wade Robson, who many of you should already be familiar with, and James Safechuck. And also, let me give a shout out to Nicole from Nicole's View because she's been like literally heavy handing this thing uh, for a while now. Anyway, I know Wade Robson, of all people, is definitely a stone cold habitual liar. Like, he used to be a world-renowned choreographer. I used to see him on, like, MTV and VH1 and choreographing for different artists back in the day, like in the early 2000s more so. And he had came forward, and he testified, I think, back in 2005 and said Michael Jackson never did anything to him. And now, all of a sudden, his story has changed all these years later when everything came out about Michael saying that, you know, to prove his innocence. And now his whole story has changed. I'm telling you, it's because he's hurting for some funds. Or maybe he was promised something and he never got it. And that's why he's feeling some type of way. As for this James Safechuck, uh, I'm not too familiar with him. But also, Oprah managed to interview the director of the uh so-called documentary. I believe his name is Dan Reed. I'm I pro I'm probably got it. Yeah, it is Dan Reed who decided she decided to interview him as well. Now, what's very interesting is that Oprah interviewed Michael Jackson back in 2000, not 2000, back in 1993, uh, right before those first set of allegations came out. And he said that was like the highest watched interview ever put on to network television. I said they 90 million viewers and nobody has pretty much ever done that since. Michael Jackson, a black man, gave her those ratings. You got to think about that. Michael Jackson gave her those ratings. More than any other person she's ever interviewed, whether they were a celebrity or was for an organization or just your a regular run of the mill person. No one but him. And it was outside of her studio where she did. He actually, actually had to go to Neverland, his ranch, his home, to actually do it. Now, what I find to be very interesting is that Oprah got all these views, all these viewers from that interview with a black man. But she put all these white people on as far as getting careers. I mean, Nate Burkis, you know, the guy that used to do like the interior decorating the homes and stuff for her and, you know, her, for people. Of course, we all know about Dr. Phil and things of that nature. I wouldn't be surprised if she even gave Ellen a leg up. Because, you know, Ellen, they always used to say, who's going to be the new queen of daytime talk, you know, now that Oprah is gone? And I think at, I think it's safe to say that Ellen is most likely in that position. So she put a lot of other white people on, but it was through a black individual that she got a lot of her notoriety. How about that? Like, like, pe like people always say, Oprah is really not for black people. A lot of people bow down and try to kiss her ass, but I'm telling you, she is not what she claims to be. She's not all she's cracked up to be. Yeah, she may be a black woman who has all this money, but look at who she hangs around. And let's not forget about her hanging around Harvey Weinstein. And we know what's going on with him. And as far as her being like with Stedman, he, well, 
he's just furniture. Let's just put it that way. She just pulls him out and uses him whenever she needs to and then puts him back whenever she doesn't want to. So he's like furniture slash, I guess you could say a play thing. She hangs around Gail more than she does Stedman. And there were always rumors flying around between her and Gail. I'm starting to believe them rumors to be true. As a matter of fact, I've been thinking those rumors were true. But one major thing that uh, was also sent to me involving this, I guess you can say, ordeal. And this is actually one of the main reasons why I'm making this video. Is this individual by the name of John of God. He is this Brazilian faith healer that was also put on by Oprah. And he has a very interesting and checkered past because he's actually right now currently in jail for sexual abuse, rape and, ju and juvenile rape, also known as pedophilia. It says that he was arrested on the 14th. Now, I don't know of when this actually happened, but it looks like it was recent because I'm trying to get the dates together because of how it was typed up. Um, but it's saying that he has a whole bunch of charges against him, like for numerous accounts of rape, pedophilia and juvenile abuse. Now, I would like to know from Okwa Wigfrey. Are you going to do a segment or some kind of special on your channel to garner it some views? Because let's be real here. The only reason she's doing this is because she needs the views. The only person that's really keeping her channel afloat is Tyler Perry. So, Okra, are you going to create some kind of a special interview and call it heal, um, being healed from John of God? I just gave you a name. I just gave you a title. But the question is, are you, would you actually use it? I already know the answer to that will be no. Because she operates to me like Tarana Burke. Remember what she said? Oh, my job is not to go after uh, white men. That's, that's what she said her job is. I'm not going to go after white men. I'm supposed to go after, you know, black men. And that's basically what Oprah is doing right now. Like she literally sat up there and denounced Michael Jackson while praising the so-called victims. And I don't even declare them victims, especially that Wade Robson. And let me give you a little background on Wade Robson. He used to date, one, um, I think, one of the Jackson brothers' uh, daughters or nieces or one of the two. I think he dated Jackie Jackson's daughter or her niece. I forget. I'm not sure if it's the niece or the daughter. Someone down in the comments can correct me. But I think her name was Brandy Jackson. How about that? And she said that they were brave for coming forward to say that they were raped by the king of pop. Well, I don't like to call him the king of pop. I call him the king of music because I believe his artistry transcended just one genre. But I hate that they boxed him into that. But that's a whole another discussion. But yeah, this doesn't surprise me in the least bit. Oprah operates like a turncoat and Oprah operates like an agent. It's just unfortunate because a lot of people don't see what we see. They only see what's on the surface. Remember, this is also the same woman that went to Paris a couple years ago and they didn't know who she was and they racially profiled her. And it was at that point when a lot of people was like, wow, I guess people really don't know Oprah like they think they do, that they do. At that time, we was coming to her defense because she was racially profiled. It didn't matter that she had billions of dollars. They didn't know who she was and say, you can't come in here because they just saw this black woman come in here and they thought she was, you know, she was going to steal something. But I have a feeling Oprah's karma will be coming. I don't know when it's coming. I don't know how it would be. But I think at this point, she is a candidate for a wake up call, a long overdue candidate for a wake up call because she has said and done some things and i can't really go into too much detail that's why if you go to harvey's page you know your world he can go and break it all the way down better than i could he, like he's done plenty of commentaries on oprah it, it'll make your head spin i don't think i've ever done a commentary on oprah before on any of my channels and i may have done one or two but i can't remember because she's not a person i always talk about 
I may mention her in a video, but I don't actually make her a topic of discussion. I try my best to avoid having to talk about her, but this is one of the times where I had to, you know, say something. So that's really all I have to say as it pertains to right now. I will not be watching that documentary. I have a feeling that if you are a loyal supporter of mine, you will not be watching it either. As a matter of fact, I think I was listening to Nicole and they were saying, well, on that day, just go ahead and stream as many Michael Jackson songs and albums as you can. I said, oh, that'll be too easy for me. I already got one album, one entire album downloaded, and that's the Off the Wall album. I have no problem going to download the others. So with that being said, y'all let me know what you think about this down in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, and I will talk to you in the next one.